Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Rianne Edwards, a young adult paranormal and fantasy author and today we're going to delve into the second episode of the Preptober series where we're going to talk about characters, the rewards we're going to set ourselves and the nano community. So let's dive in. First of all, if you haven't, check out my books below. The first three books in a young adult urban fantasy series are out now and I'll leave the links below for you as well. So first of all, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It will really help me out and I would love to see you here again. So let's go straight into our story Bible. So I first came across this term when I was watching some Bethany Atasadea videos and she had a story Bible for her Stolen Kingdom series. So that's what I have done and I tell you what, I wish I had done this when I wrote the first book in last year's NaNoWriMo because already I have gleaned so much information and I can go back and update book one, which I will obviously do, but this would have helped so much. So all, all it is, is this is just an A4 ring binder. So that's all I've done. And then I can put all my papers in there. So I'm not gonna go through the whole, well, there's actually not that much in it at the moment, um, but we're gonna focus on characters. So the first few pages I've actually taken from Sarah Cannon's Preptober workbook. Not all of it was relevant for me, but some, it might help you out. But so all I've done is just print out the November calendar, some word tracking worksheets, a sprint tracking worksheet, um, the reward chart, which we'll go through in a minute, and then just like another thing that I can colour off. So then we get to character profiles and I think characters are really central to plot Now I know that might sound really obvious but what I mean is I feel like na uh, narrowing down the characters and securing those help with plot development so I have a I normally have a rough outline not outline in my head but I have a rough story idea in my head and then I start thinking about the characters because we want the story to work for the characters. We want people, our readers, to care about our characters. And if we don't know what our characters like wants and desires and goals are in life, then the things that happen to them in our stories won't make the reader care and we want and we want them to. So if we know what our characters in a wants, desires and goals are, that means we can tailor our story, our plot points to that character. Um, so that's what I've done. Now I don't know about you but I am notorious for forgetting details halfway through writing and in fact my best friend reads my stories first and she's at the first point that it goes through and she's always saying um didn't this person have blonde hair a couple chapters back and I'm like yes yes they did. So I have actually got four I know it sounds really silly but the first part of this is like a literal profile sheet so literally things like name, age, eye colour, hair colour, height, like features, who their relatives are and their background story. So that takes you up to there because it's just information that I seem to always forget and then I've got it on hand that I can go back to. Um, and then I've got like a predicted character arc and then story notes that my son's already scribbled on. But when I'm writing, when I'm reading back and editing it, I can make some notes on here because side note, what I tend to do is I'll read the whole book through after I finished. So without stopping to edit, I normally send it to my Kindle device so that I am not tempted to edit as I go. I read through the whole story, get a feel for the whole story. And that's when I might make some notes here. So that's my first character profile sheet that I have just made that up. And then this sheet is actually another sheet from Sarah Cannon from her Plot a Novel workbook. I'll link down her Heart Breathings channel below so you can go and check that out. If you subscribe to her Heart Breathings um, website, newsletter, you'll get access to these 
for free. They're absolutely brilliant. So I've just printed out the bits that work for me and this is about their inner journey. So it goes through what their deepest desire is, what do they truly need even if they don't know it yet, and um, what happened in the past that made them who they are now, what do they believe themselves to be true even if it's not true, so what are they most afraid of, how do they portray themselves on the outside versus how they are on the inside. And then over here, there's a bit of a table that talks about their outer and their inner goals, motivations and conflicts. Because sometimes what our outer goals, conflicts and motivations can differ from our inner motivations and goals. Now, sometimes they can be similar, but maybe the true motivation or the conflict that comes about could actually differ. And that's good for and that's another good thing for understanding your plot. Um, and then it talks about um, a character arc, just some ideas. So this is sort of the character arc I see for the entire series, so not just for one book. And so I have that for all of my main characters. For characters that are not quite main characters yet, they just have the first, let me get to one, they just have the first profile sheet. And then right at the back, I've got a character tracking sheet that I put together so that other characters, um, when I say side characters, I'm sure you know what I mean. So characters that are important, important to the story, but not necessarily, I don't need to know all their inner wants and desires. Um, so I can put that information there. And indeed, I do have a bunch of spare pictures. Um, so I suppose I should say these pictures, I just got them from Pinterest. I have a whole board. I spoke about it in my last video, I'm pretty sure. So I'll link it down below as well so you can sort of see the things. When I'm on Pinterest, I just literally save things that inspire me or I feel like, oh, yeah, that looks good. So not always for a specific reason, just a certain vibe that I'm feeling. So yeah, all these pictures are just from pinterest that i have printed out and put together with so they don't always necessarily reflect the character that i'm describing but it's there to give me some sort of um visual i'm a very visual person <laughs> i mean i write words but i'm very visual <laughs> so these are my character profiles and i would i haven't filled them out for everybody yet some of these i'll fill out as i go along as i figure things out for my main character Rayleigh so she is the the heir to throne in this story she's obviously very central so i've done her already and the next character i'll be doing is Ren who's the love interest he's the he's part of her guard he in the first book he was doing all the trials to get into her guard so he's an important character as well in fact the rest of the guard I'll also do these in-depth profiles for because eventually I'd like to expand on the world so after this first four books which will be about Rayleigh and Wren and that storyline I also want to do some um what are they called like offshoots I do want to do some prequels with her mother and also some prequels of way back when when the first um kingdom wars happened i want to do some stories on them but i also want to do some stories around her personal guard their own sort of story whether they're shorts or not i don't know yet but so i do need to sort of know a little bit more about them so i can start feeding that through now and the same with her mother and her mother's personal guard so her mother's the queen so her mother and her mother's personal guard i want them to all have their own origin prequel stories so i need to know a little bit more about them before i start writing them if that makes any sense whatsoever okay so that is character profile sheet so how are you writing your characters let me know in the in the comments below i want to know about your characters and how you're writing them and do you just write them from your head do you have a rough um outline of your characters do you plan like i do and think about their inner wants and desires it'd be really interesting to know how other people plan their characters but that's how i'm planning mine and i have to say doing this has really helped me um think about the story for plot for book two but also going back and editing book one i'm actually really excited to edit book one i won't be able to edit before we're writing book two um because that's in that's in a couple of weeks nano so but knowing the edits that i want to do will help me write book two 
So they are the characters. So let's talk about rewards, okay? So I have this sheet here, which I'm thinking of putting up on my wall somewhere. So rewards. A lot of people reward themselves throughout Nano. I've never done it before, but I feel like with two young children at home um, and other things going on in my life, I feel like if I get to 50,000 words, I should be rewarding myself. So I've written down some ideas of things that I can get myself. But obviously my budget's quite small and I don't really know what things to include. So what I'm going to do is over on my Instagram stories, I'm going to give some options. I'm going to give people to give me some options and then I'm going to do some polls on what I can do to reward myself. And I'm going to reward myself, as the sheet says, so every 10,000 words. So 10, 20, 30, 40 and then 50,000 words. Um and then I will give myself those rewards as well. I think it's just another incentive to get through or, you know, maybe we don't need incentives. Maybe it's just nice to get something and think, oh yeah, I've done a good job. So I'm going to do that. So if you're not following me on Instagram, come over and check out my stories where I'll be talking about the rewards that we are going to give ourselves um, and maybe get some ideas for your own rewards. So the nano community is the last thing I want to discuss today because as I've said before nano is a very hard month to get through writing 50,000 words it's if you write daily that's about 1600 on average a day and that's a lot of words and um, especially as if you're like me you're probably not going to be able to write every day yes I am going to write more than I usually would it is a challenge you have to do that but I have got two young children at home and I can't like it's hard to write around them they're not I mean they're six months old and just over two years old so they really aren't old enough to be left to their own devices for a little bit so I won't be writing every day and I think in last week's episode I did touch on how there'll be some days where I literally just put my laptop on for half an hour at the end of the day when they're in bed just to see if I can get 100 words out, even just 100 words, just to keep things ticking over in my brain. And chances are I might write more when I do that. But I'm planning in my head for there to be many days like that. And I know there'll be some days where I can just sit and just focus on my writing. But again, so childcare issues might come up. One of them might be ill. Like my daughter had chicken pox the other week. And so it's just, it's unpredictable. So we can, we'll talk about um, sort of finalising our plans and timings next week. I'm going to show you my timeline and my plan that I hope to do. Okay, so the Nano community. So on Nano, the NaNoWriMo website, you can add people as um, friends and follow their progress. You can also create groups of people on there as well. So the actual Nano website is really good. If you do want to add me, I'll leave my details below and we can follow each other and support each other on the Nano website. And then also don't discount social media. I know there's a lot of negative connotations with social media and love the platform of Instagram. I really do. And I have made some fantastic friends on Instagram. I have made friends with um, beta readers and I've contacted, I've been, I've been in contact with just loads of other authors and readers and it's I absolutely love Instagram. So, and I'm sure Instagram has its own negative things as well, but I really enjoy it. And I've actually been added to a couple of groups on there where people have said, oh, do you wanna join our nano group so we can all speak to each other and keep each other accountable? And I was like, yes, absolutely. We'll be showing, sharing my word count and how I'm doing day to day. And um, of course they will, but also I'm going to be celebrating the achievements of the actual story itself and how I feel about the story. And I think that's really important. And Instagram's given me that sort of confidence as well. So I know I'm sort of bolstering Instagram here but it's a brilliant platform come and follow me over there come and say hi I'll be in my stories um a lot during nano and just sharing how the process is going I will share the ups and the downs because I think that's really important 
as um, a couple of videos ago when I talked about mental health. I think it's really important to share both the ups and the downs. It is for me. I'm the kind of person that really connects with that. So it makes me feel better in a way to hear other people are the same as me. So I'll be sharing the ups and the downs. I will be sharing the days where I managed to get two or three thousand words done and get several chapters done and I'm really excited about the story and I'm also going to share those days when I've got nothing done, the kids have been on me all day and tearing my hair out about them and I've literally written ten words down because that's all I can manage and even that was not great and I'll probably re do them the next day. I will share all that and I want you guys to share that too because we're on this journey together and it's not a straight linear journey. It's this. It's a roller coaster. So come and join us for the roller coaster that is nano. <laughs> right guys, I'm going to end it there. So next week I'm going to talk to you about setting, which I am really excited about because my brother went away on a sort of van camping trip with a group of people and his and his dog and they went away to Scotland and oh my the scenery the pictures he sent me were beautiful I have asked him to spam me with those photos because I already knew roughly where my plot was going in book two and I was like oh, I need those pictures so I'm going to share those with you next week and what it means for the story that I'm writing. So we're going to talk about settings, we're going to talk about mood boards and we're going to talk about finalising our plans. So stay tuned for that, it'll be the last week in the Preptober series and then we're moving into Nano itself. <laughs> okay so I have definitely mumbled for so much, I've definitely gone on. <laughs> So next week we'll talk about setting, we'll talk about mood boards and we'll talk about finalising those plans and getting ready for Nano. Okay, it was nice speaking to you all and I will see you later. Bye guys. Bye.